Hi, I'm Jack Cush with the Baylor Research Institute talking about adult onset Stills disease and its diagnosis. So this can be a challenge. Um, patients often present with a fever of unknown origin um, and a myriad of symptoms that are quite worrisome. JM is a 21-year-old Latin male admitted to the hospital with a two-week history of fever, chills, night sweats, and sore throat. He had myalgias, he was losing weight and had a loss of appetite. There was pleuritic chest pain and a non-productive cough. He quickly developed respiratory distress and had to be admitted to the ICU uh, and ultimately went on a respirator. He had diffuse lymphadenopathy. He had a macular papular rash over his trunk, arms, and legs. Labs showed a white count as high as 62,000, a set rate of 48. He had an elevated AST and ALT that was four times normal, and he had negative tests for ANA and rheumatoid factor. Chest x-rays showed cardiomegaly, bilateral pleural effusions, an interstitial and alveolar infiltrate on both lung fields, and blood gas showed a uh, pH of 7.5 with a PO2 of 68 on room air. This clinical course was marked by problematic pleuritis, pericarditis. This required pericardial drainage and pleural drainage. Um, he ultimately went on to get a chest tube. He, because it was myocarditis, he had an endomyocardial biopsy, proving that he had a nonspecific inflammatory myocarditis. Once the systemic disease was controlled by high doses of steroids, he later went on to develop chronic severe erosive arthritis despite aggressive treatment at that time with gold and methotrexate, but within two years he had bilateral hip replacements. Later this, this gentleman died as, as a result of complications of steroid therapy. So again, this is a very severe case of someone with a systemic onset who develops later on into a chronic severe polyarthritis and then has complications related to his therapies. The diagnosis in him was not made early on. It was uh, problematic and a, 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 a significant challenge. Um, the key to the diagnosis is not just the recognition of the triad symptoms of, uh, of the fever, the rash, and the uh, polyarthritis, but also you, what labs can be used to support that. Here you can see that there are often negative tests for ANA and rheumatoid factor. 95% should be seronegative. Um, the white count should be high and often with a large left shift suggesting a very inflammatory disease. White counts have been as high. Usually they're higher than 12,000 and they may be as high as 62,000 as seen in this patient. Um, the average patient tends to be uh, 12 to 20,000 uh, with a left shift. They quickly develop an anemia chronic disease, which by the way, as their hemoglobin matica drops, so does their albumin, so does their weight. They all go together as this person has high fevers and uncontrolled systemic disease. Uh, hyperferritinemia often gets a lot of play in Stills disease, but recognize it is not as um, diagnostic as everyone believes it is, and it's not as sensitive as, as you would like it to be. It's found in up to 60% of patients with this condition, whereas other acute phase reactants, the CRP, the C-reactive protein, and the erythrocyte sedimentation rate, these are often either singly or both are very, very high and uh, further indicate the inflammatory nature of the condition. Here you can see the distribution of patients and their white count with the vast majority of people having a white count of less than 25,000. This is the distribution of the SED rate. You can see that 90% of people will have a SED rate greater than 50 and that 50% of people will have a SED rate greater than 90. Ferritin can be very, very high in Stills disease. It usually is very high in people with any inflammatory disorder, but usually 100 or 200 or whatnot. What is distinctive about Stills disease is when it does occur, it's not surprising to see a, a ferritin level of 20,000, of 15,000, something that's well above 2,000. Uh, and again, extremely high ferritin should lead one to consider other diagnoses as well, but also to worry about the onset of the hemophagocytic syndrome or the macrophage activation syndrome, which also has hyperferritinemia as a feature. On the right, you can see what happens to ferritin levels in kids with Stills disease once they receive effective treatment with steroids. Hyperferritinemia can be seen in Stills, Stills disease, but you should think of iron overload states as well, polytransfusion, hemochromatosis, acute or chronic liver disease, and even cancer. I've probably seen more patients with hyperferritinemia due to neoplasia, sepsis, uh, and, and vasculitis than I have with Stills disease, but other conditions like sepsis, pancreatitis, the hemophagocytic syndrome should be considered when this is being seen.
So how does one make the diagnosis of Stills disease? You can rely on uh, criteria. These are my criteria published in Bolton Rheumatic Diseases in 2000, wherein it, you can have major or minor. Uh, you get two points for a major criterion uh, or one point for the minor criterion. If you have 10 points, you're likely to have Stills disease. So the major criteria are the quotidian spiking fever is greater than 39 degrees centigrade, uh, uh, evanescent or Stills rash. The third, the simultaneous elevation of white count and sed rate or another acute phase reactant. Number four, um, a negative test for rheumatoid factor and ANA. And lastly, carpal ankylosis. If you had those five, you'd have 10 points and highly likely of having the Stills disease once you've excluded infection. However, for every one major one that you lack, you can must, you're gonna need a minor one. And the minor ones include an onset age less than 35, um, polyarthritis, the prodromal sore throat, RES uh, or LFT elevation, RES meaning hepatosplenomegaly or generalized lymphadenopathy, the presence of pericarditis or pleuritis meaning serositis, and then cervical or tarsal ankylosis. Again, they're not that common, but when they are there, they're somewhat specific for this condition compared to others that might present in the same manner. Again, a six weeks of these features along with a point total gives you a likely diagnosis, a probable diagnosis. If, if this has been going on for more than six months, it's almost a, con a confirmation of diagnosis. There are other criteria. The criteria of Yamaguchi et al. published in Journal of Rheumatology in 1992 also goes along the same pattern, major criteria being fever greater than 39, arthralgia for more than two weeks, a stills rash, and a neutrophilic leukocytosis. Minor criteria are sore throat, uh, 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 lymphadenopathy or splenomegaly, hepatic dysfunction, and lastly, um, seronegativity for ANA and rheumatoid factor. You need to have five or more of the criteria, including two major, uh, and that me also includes the exclusion of other neoplastic or infectious causes of that same presentation. The differential diagnosis here is wide. Uh, in the top left, I give you the conditions that are most often confused with Stills disease. That would include acute viral syndromes, dermatomyositis, reactive arthritis, Crohn's disease, leukemia or lymphoma at its onset, and then the hemophagocytic syndrome. But you can see that the differential is quite large um, and it takes a, a skilled eye and often a number of different consultants to make sure it's not one of these other conditions. So there are other febrile disorders one should consider um, that give you these periodic fevers. And these are often called the auto-inflammatory syndromes or the periodic uh, fever syndromes. Uh, in adults, we're looking at familial Mediterranean fever, Mucklewell syndrome, cyclic neutropenia, Schnitzler syndrome, the hemophagocytic syndrome. Rarely would lupus or polymyalgia rheumatica or giant cell arteritis actually give you a sort of periodic or daily fevers like this, but it could be in the mix along with Stills disease. Rare, rare, rare conditions seen in children and neonates would include the Nomad and Sinca syndrome, the familial cold auto-inflammatory syndrome, traps that, uh, uh, um, the, or Hibernian fever, uh, hyper IgD syndrome, pa the FAPA syndrome, Blau syndrome, and PAPA syndromes. These are all very rare conditions occurring in children's. So what if it's not Stills disease? This can be a real challenge. Um, often time will tell you if it's Stills disease, because if it is, it'll last. I tell most of my patients Stills disease will last either eight months or eight years and then go into remission spontaneously. There are a lot of patients who have acute febrile onsets and often are not going to be adequately diagnosed because they'll resolve in three weeks or three months. And is that a viral syndrome or another syndrome? It's not known. So again, of limited duration, one has to think of other conditions, especially when the fever is not as high as what you see of 104, 105, or doesn't have the typical quotidian pattern, meaning it has an ba elevated baseline or doesn't truly occur Q12 or Q24 hours. When the arthritis is either absent or when there's a monarthritis, you should really um, doubt the diagnosis of Stills disease. The rash used, needs to be typical. If it's a fixed rash, it's not changing, or if it involves the face, hands, or palms and soles, um, you need to reconsider. Other atypical features would include isolated lymphadenopathy, think lymphoma and leukemia, um, many blasts on CBC, think of lymphoma and leukemia, and weakness, you should think of myositis. Again, the treatment for such individuals should be symptomatic, and time will tell you whether they truly have Stills disease or not. So it's important to look for the key elements of the disease, the triad features, the laboratory features, and then to use criteria wisely. Be cautious when patients have atypical presentations or widespread pain, such as fibromyalgia, um, that might confound the diagnosis.